Hey, what's up guys? It's Mike with Alpha Reptile back with another video today and today we're going to be doing a isopod update as well as I guess like a springtail and kind of care. Uh, I just need to go through and feed all my springtails as well as feed my isopods. So I'm just going to bring you guys along and you guys can check out the collection with me. Alrighty, so here we are at most of my springtail cultures. You can see I have a couple 16 ounce containers. I have an 8 ounce and then I have some Tupperware at the back there. I'm basically just going to show you these cultures because a springtail is a springtail and you guys don't really need to see a whole bunch of springtail cultures but I'll just go in here and we'll start feeding them off here this is my special springtail food you can use the custodian fuel I needed to make more of this but then I found a whole bag in my fridge so next time I make more I will show you guys the recipe and and share the recipe with you guys Springtail food can be as easy as just using brewer's yeast though. You certainly don't have to do as much crazy stuff as I do, but you can just see I just sprinkle some on in there and then I'll get you guys a nice close up of the culture here. So yeah, you can just see they're all little white invertebrates that eat mold and various other things. So <laughs> a springtail is a springtail in my opinion. Um, they're very, very useful for having in your enclosures though, so if you don't have any, um, I would strongly recommend picking some up because they do a great job at cleaning up and uh, just overall eating a bunch of different kinds of molds and uh, other unwanted dying organisms in the tank. So I guess I'll just keep the camera rolling and I'll just go around and feed everybody here. These cultures, you can see I made them back in 2017. Uh, December 2017 and I'll go through and feed them the the amount that you saw there ideally I mean it's been probably a month since I fed them last but ideally if you're trying to get like a booming springtail culture collection I suppose uh, you're going to want to do it about once a week even twice a week depending on how crazy your springtail collection is. And then these ones were just made in, uh, when were these made? These were made in April of this year, April 10th. It's not as easy as it might look to do this one-handed. So those are most of my springtails. I'm not going to show you the other ones. I have a couple more master cultures, but I don't I don't really think it's necessary to to show you guys that. You see what you see in front of you? Oh, I guess I should answer if you guys are seeing this white powder in between, that's basically diatomaceous earth. Um, so you can use it for like dogs and cats and stuff to prevent any mites from getting on them and, and or ticks. I think it works for ticks as well. I'm not too sure to be honest. But in this case, it's to prevent the spread of mites from culture to culture. Basically what happens is the mites will fall into the diatomaceous earth and they'll just die there. So... It works really well if you guys are having issues with mites in your springtails, isopods, fruit flies, whatever you have issues with mites in, pick up some diatomaceous earth from Amazon and it will change your lives. So that's going to do it for the springtail portion. For those of you that have been following my Instagram and stuff like that, uh, you'll know that I was at the last Reptile Expo as my first time vending. I was actually going to try and pick up one of the green long tail grass lizards. I think my buddy still has it and I might end up grabbing it. I haven't decided yet. But really the only thing other than that that I bought are some isopods. So the bug guys, if you guys don't know about them. They're a BC based company and if you guys are interested in following them they have Instagram and social media down there at the bud guys or Vernon bug guys. That's their Instagram and stuff like that so go give them a follow. Let them know that I sent you. Uh, I know Desiree would be pretty stoked that um, you guys go and follow her so go do that. Uh, and then I picked up some Porcilio Nope, some Oniscus oncellus, I think they are. 
Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. These are going to be an experiment. I'm gonna culture them first, but they are going to be an experiment in the leopard gecko tank. I just need to add some sphagnum moss to where he goes to the bathroom, and then that way these guys will have a nice humid area to retreat to. But these are also known as the giant canyon isopods. And last but not least, uh, we got the actual, I guess, isopods from the bug guys. These are just powder blue isopods. I'll probably keep them in this container for a little while just for them to start reproducing a little bit. I'll obviously add in some leaf litter and whatnot just to get it all set up and ready to go. But uh, yeah, those are the powder blue isopods. Alrighty, and this is pretty much the bulk of my isopod collection. I do have a couple other ones that I'm not gonna bother showing in here because they're really not doing well. They're just the dwarf white isopods and the dwarf purple isopods are the ones that I won't be showing in this video. But basically, what I go to do these are the maculatum. So these guys here are the zebra isopods. You can kind of see why, I assume. They're actually doing really well for me right now. Uh, you can see a whole bunch of babies down here. There's a bunch all over the place. Oh, there's a bunch right there. On the log there. So these guys are pretty easily taken care of. I pretty much take care of all my isopods the exact same, which is probably why some do better and some don't. But I honestly just don't have the time to go through and make a separate version of care for each isopod that I have. Maybe I should, and maybe over summertime I'll have a little bit more time to do that. But currently, that is not the case. What I'm currently feeding my isopods is actually the Rapashi Morning Wood. Uh, this is kind of Rapashi's like joke product, but it honestly does do really well. I just put a little pile of it on top of the cork bark and they'll go nuts over it over the next couple days. I haven't again done this since the beginning of May just because of the time crunch that May Madness puts on. But ideally, you'd be doing this about once a week or depending on how quickly your isopods eat the food, uh, you'll be doing it a little bit more often than that. Typically, I'll do it once a week though. Trachylapis rathkai, I believe, I, I think is what I have them labeled as. Nope, these are the peach isopods. You can see there's one hanging out there. I can't remember if this is Porcilio Scaber or Porcilio Lavis. You can see that guy there. And then there's a couple more in the soil. You can see another one right there. And I actually really don't have too many of these. I think I just got given a couple of them last time I was at Jungle Jewel. Thank you, Jungle Jewel. Oh, and would you look at that? It looks like right at the tip of the tongs, there's actually a little baby there. So that's awesome. I'm really happy to see that. So I'll just, again, go in there, add a tap of it on top of the cork bark, and that's the maintenance for this culture. Ideally, if you're dealing with isopods, you should have some sort of leaf litter in there because they live in the leaf litter in the wild. So it is definitely more natural to have some leaf litter in there with them. Unfortunately, I just don't have any, or at least none that I'm going to put in with my isopods right now. I don't have like a crazy abundance of it, so I don't use it for my isopods right now. These guys are Porcilio Scaber. Um, these are the skirted isopods. Obviously you can see one there that's just like slate gray. And then there's one of the other ones that's a little bit more girded. And these guys, same thing, have babies too. You can see them lying in the soil there. But I'll put that back down. And that is that one. Alrighty, and these are, I believe, the dairy cows. Um, I reckon these are Persilio lavis. You guys can see a couple of them. Ooh, quick little boys. There you go, you can see that one pretty well. Hello. Really cool little isopods. And then I'll just do my little feeding here. And done. And we only have one left, and these actually might be dwarf 
whites, if I can remember correctly. Nope, I have no idea what these are. They're pretty big. There's actually quite a few of them. I don't know what these are. <laughs> if somebody could let me know in the comments down below, that would be sweet. And then I do have one more culture of powder blues that I set up. I got these all when I got my last tarantulas, or true spiders, I guess. They're not actually tarantulas. But these guys actually have quite a few mites in there. So I don't know how how many actual isopods are in here still. Ooh. They're still definitely in here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so these are... They're supposed to be powder blues, but they look a lot more gray. So... That kind of sucks, but they're doing well. Uh, there is quite a few mites, as I said earlier, but they are just sitting on a on a bed of the diatomaceous earth. So I don't have to worry about them too, too much. Yeah, that's actually going to do it for this video. I, I thought I had more isopods to show off, but I guess I don't. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you click that like button. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, leave them in the comment section. I really would like to hear, for those of you that made it to the end, what you would like to see for the last couple days of May Madness. Uh, I would love to get some cool stuff done. But as you guys know, Friday is the last day of May Madness. So I need two more videos. I need to think of one for Thursday and Friday. So if you guys can help me out in the comment section down below, that would be awesome. Uh, this is my small but okay collection of isopods. I ain't trying to compete with Ladybug or Dion Reptiliatus. I know he's got an insane collection of isopods. Yeah, these guys are just more of like a cool kind of hobby for me. I'm not really trying to produce them in mass numbers. Otherwise, I'd be taking care of them a lot better and making sure I get stuff done with them. But, you know, we're out here. You got to make your priorities. I guess at the moment, vertebrates are a focus rather than the isopods. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. I already said it all. Thanks for watching. For those of you that made it to the very end, I don't think I said click that subscribe button. So make sure you go ahead and do that. And uh, we'll catch you tomorrow for the second last day of May Madness. Later, guys. Whoop.